Right, now let's uh, focus on question 43, which is Corbel Company. And uh, it's, it's a question from uh, December and September, December exam 2020, right? So we'll be focusing on uh, requirement B3, uh, right? Requir requirement B subsection three. Uh, the, uh, the question is on IFRS file. So the topic is on IFRS file. This is the third pass paper question on IFRS file. Let's read the requirement using the exhibit three. So the exhibit three says plan to close and sell stores, right? Provide information. It, this particular exhibit provides information relating to the plan to close and sell all of its Italian stores on 31st of December, 2017. So we've been asked to use this exhibit, exhibit three, which I've highlighted in yellow, and how to account for the proposed closure of six stores and the suggested closure of the remaining stores. So again, the question, you know, it did not mention the standard specifically, right? So we have to first uh, find out, or we need to first determine which is the relevant accounting standards that we should be uh, considering. That's the first step when you attempt a question, right? We just need to identify the relevant accounting standards or standards maybe multiple standards. So we just need to consider. Let's read the overview. It's always better that we will read the overview. So we can see the, the exhibit one is about acquisition of a Jengi company. So this is nothing to do with Jengi company. We are focusing on this, uh, the stores closure. So we don't have to go to exhibit one. Exhibit two is about uh, uh, perfume brands nothing to do with this uh, we are focusing on stores so exhibit four is about primary store the carbo company's primary store explain the possible impairment of uh, the primary stores in paris so it is not something uh, is related to us because the the exhibit three relates to stores in uh, italian right it's italian stores so it is nothing to do with paris so exhibit three is the only exhibit we needed but it always is better to read the overview um, or the background information. So the Cobalt Company trades in uh, the uh, perfume sector. It has recently acquired a company for the for its brand Jeng, right? So that's Exhibit One. Probably uh, we uh, have we uh, we haven't gone through probably this question may be related to uh, any. Uh, I think it is related to I IAS thirty eight because it says uh, intangible assets here. Right, speaking about intangible assets, so probably IAS that is, we'll be covering at some point later. Then uh, we're going to focus only on um, exhibit three. And uh, it says the current financial year end has been given as 31st of December 2017. So we are currently on 31st of December 2017. This date is important because we just need to know where we stand. Suppose if we have to you know, reporting date is important for the subsequent measurements uh, to, to identify the subsequent measurements um, and the initial measurements purposes is important for us to know which is the uh, financial year end date. Now we can simply uh, go and focus on exhibit three. So let's read the exhibit three before we uh, make up. So we've been asked to deal with the accounting issues, right? So we still don't know what is the relevant accounting standard. So when you read a paragraph, the, the exhibit, the related exhibit, first thing should be that you should ask questions, you know, what accounting standard or standards, which accounting standards or standards would apply to this particular scenario. So here we have Cobalt Company approved and announced a plan to close all six Italian stores, right? So it announced the plan on that uh, year-end date, right? The year-end we know, was on 31st of December. This was the year end date. On this date, they have announced a plan. What is the plan? They are announcing to everyone they're gonna they have a clear plan to close and sell all of its stores on 31st of December 2017. So to start with, the announcement was made on 31st of December 2017. It was when when the announcement was made. They're saying we have a plan to sell. So sim simply because it is a plan to sell, that means asset or the uh, what we haven't read further, whatever they're going to sell, um, it was not sold yet, isn't it? it? It was not sold on 31st of December, right? We have a plan to sell. So when we have something 
to sell. Probably now we need when you check the conditions, if you have anything to sell, then you know automatically it will fit in within IFRS 5, right? IFRS 5, and there would be non-current assets held for sales. And this is the first thing that will fit in, non-current assets held for sale. Right? And the first thing, always remember when you start a standards, once you identified it, then the first part, the paragraph, is an easiest paragraph that you can score half of the marks out of the questions. You would now need to uh, state, you know, what are the conditions that need to be satisfied to, uh, you just need to relate the condition what has been pointed out. And because it is an accounting issue, we've been asked to explain how these tr uh, transactions or the events need to be accounted for. Then I hope you remember those uh, conditions that those steps that we when we did a question right those uh, steps that we need to follow that need to be stated right so those brief definitions and then those uh, approach to um, uh, classifying something as a non-current as a health for sales could be easily uh, stated in the questions that's one so we know that the first item would be non-current asset held for sale right so we may have an asset held for sale so basically they said here they have they're going to sell all six italian stores so the key is important these words are important right all everything what they have in italian they're going to sell them and uh, so <clears throat> all italian stores they're going to sell right more so we know it is in a held for sale that's the first thing to make note right so asset held for sale conditions we would be speaking about then the six stores will close after the liquidation sale which would last for three months then management has committed to a formal plan for the closure of six stores now really very carefully you know in order for us to satisfy the asset held for sale we know there are a few conditions need to be seen. two main conditions one is where you know the the sales must be it must be ready to be sold in its at its present conditions that uh, no further amendments or any changes to the assets need to be done required and the second one sale must be highly probable right within what is highly probable there are some conditions there uh, in order to meet that highly probable conditions one of them is that the manage management should be firmly committed so that that's condition is given management has committed for a plan for the close see here committed uh, for management has committed to see here they committed to a plan, a formal plan. So th that means through one single plan, they're ready to sell the whole six uh, um, stores, right? As, as another important condition that is, right? You need to have a single plan to sell everything, the group of assets, right? So this is because it is six, what we have here is the six uh, group, six stores. So it would be non-current asset would be under uh, disposal group. Right? It will be under disposal groups. This disposal asset group. That's how the non-consumer will be stored. And, uh, and then, then moving further, the management has committed to a plan for the closure of the six stores and has started the active search for a single buyer. This further emphasizes, this further ensures that these conditions are met. The conditions for non-current asset held for sales are met. And uh, for a single buyer for their assets. And the stores have been closed because of the increased demand. So currently the stores are closed, right? The currently the st stores are closed. So we now, because the currently the stores are closed and then we have a plan to sell. Once we have the plan to sell the assets or the we have stores, there are six major divisions. So the next thing that we're going to fall within this definition is the discontinued isn't it? so that we know the major two conditions that we need to uh, satisfy the discontinued operations reporting one would be what the the you know if we one probably that we have already sold the uh, the divisions right or we may have a plan to sell right those are the two things that we would normally start with to discuss the discontinued operations but in this case we can see we haven't sold it so the second one which is we have a plan uh, to sell the six six stores so yes it was it 
met the conditions to be declared as a non-current as a hill for sale on the balance sheet. But when it comes to the profit and loss account presentations, it need to be declared as a discontinued operations. One would be we are selling the all the six stores that we had in the tin. So that means it's a major geographical area that is being get sold. So that's one of the conditions, main conditions. And then we need to have a single plan to sell everything together in one go, right? So these two conditions satisfies if they're satisfied, and then we should be declaring it as a discontinued operations, right? These are the two things we would consider. And then the third uh, point that we would make note of would be, you know, when you have, when you're closing down your business, right? When you're closing down your business, that may indicate impairment, right? They may indicate impairment and uh, which is uh, impairment of assets, right? It may impairment of assets, which is covered under I-36, right? That's another. So, you know, we did we did uh, learn uh, impairment a little bit when you did IFRS 5. That also need to be looked into. And then the fourth one, uh, because, uh, you know, we are closing down, so there may be possible redundancy cost there because we are closing down six stores. So there is possible redundancy. Possible redundancy costs need to be considered. So basically, when I say it is a provision, because we are closing down in, in going to be in two months. So it's at uh, the provisions we need to consider. Do we have to put a provisions, which is covered uh, by IAS 37 provisions, right? So these are the four facts that we would discuss when it comes to this question, right? It would, would be enabled us to get 80% of the marks at minimum, right? So every question that you attempt, you have to keep in mind, you must score at, at least 75 to 80% on each question and each subsections, right? So here, if, if the marks was six, right? The marks was six, so... If you just say 80, you have to at least five mark, you have to score, right? To keep yourself on track to pass the paper, right? Now let's look at the marking scheme on this. And this is the marking scheme. We're gonna focus on only on question three. And we were told there were six marks provided for this. And you can see here, right? I always say the first thing that you would explain, you would start with by stating the principles. You you need to identify the standard. So here we have identified the standard, which is IFRS 5, both components, both uh, parts need to be discussed. Non-current as a help for sales need to be discussed. And then uh, the discontinued operations also need to be discussed. So when I say discuss, we just need to quickly briefly explain and then it's conditions, right? We just, we just do them. And then we would ap apply the scenario to the apply the standards to the scenario or bring the uh, scenario to the standards, whatever the way, right? So we just need to focus. And you can see equal marks being given. So you could have easily scored 50 marks by simply writing what you know. And if you have memorized, or if you, um, if, if, if you are, if you, you know, when it comes to the standards, the terminologies, especially when you're using BPP books, terminologies are, they are very good, excellent script for exam purposes. At least definitions you can quote, it would be better, right? You, you refer, the standard uh, name, and then you would quote the definitions, it would be better. your chances would be very high to score good marks, right? Or you can put them in your own words. That's also okay, right? Now let's look at these uh, uh, part. As I, I, I already, I have already covered this, right? I already covered them. And uh, <clears throat> let's look at it. So you know what I've done? So the first part, <clears throat> first part, that is a plan to sell, isn't it? Plan to sell uh, within the next 12 months. So in that case, we need to discuss and it is also not a single asset, it's a group of assets. We are selling six stores in one single transaction. So we would briefly define what is the uh, disposal group. This is taken from your lecture notes, right? You would briefly define this. Basically, what are these? These are, you see, group of assets disposed of together in a group to a single transaction, right? And that's what is disposal group mean. And these are the conditions you would briefly, um, you should be able to, uh, Explain. You can do this in your own words, right? If you don't need to be struggling, you can do it in your own words. See, an entity shall classify a non-current asset or a disposal group can be classified as a non-current asset, which is this case. 
as held for sale in its carrying amount uh, held for sale if its carrying amount is principally uh, through a sales transaction. So basically, IFRS 5 means what? We are trying to say to the world, we have no intention of uh, using the asset in the business uh, and the carrying amount that, that we can see on the balance sheet, it's simply recovered, will be recovered by selling the uh, assets within the next 12 months. And for that, these are the six uh, main two conditions that it must be available uh, for immediate sale. And then it has to be highly probable. Highly probable are always. You know, in this example, we were told um, them the management has a clear plan. There's an active program there and also sales would take place within 12 months. So it is the group. Uh, we would have to consider that the conditions are satisfied. And then uh, we can treat it as a non-current asset held for sale. So the second point would be, here, if you just read the question requirement, it says how this need to be accountable. The question is not about whether it will be treated as a non-current asset. Yes, we have discussed first. We said we gave the definitions and we're going to apply it now um, to the case and say this would be considered as non-current asset for sale. Like we're going to say these points. We will, we're going to write and say that there is a management is highly committed and then there is a clear plan to sell, one single plan to sell within 12 months and uh, there is an active search to buy, uh, to look for a buyer. So these conditions uh, indicate that uh, uh, this asset would qualify for a non-current asset held for sale. That means what we're going to do with the presentation. In the presentation, we would move that group of assets from the uh, non-current assets and we would move further down to the current assets and it would be declared under the current assets as a non-current asset held for sale. That's the first part, right? Uh, we would be discussing about non-current assets held for sale to group of assets. That's the first part. But then this is about how we're going to account it. You know, the accounting part of non-current asset held for sale is where that we did an illustration. You know? So we did this illustration and uh, an example that we did for the measurement, these five conditions. You know? right these five steps so let me also bring that to the other side so we did discuss these five steps right so here again you can write them in your own words but you would quickly say what is expected to do you know we before before we recognize them i think i've done i will be uploading the video on those uh, uh, activities right so before we classify them we need to apply the existing standard because we cannot apply ifrs 5 until the day we we satisfy the condition so step one has to be we need to apply the existing standard step two is where that we would start apply the existing standards and if it is a revaluation model we would be applying revaluation order if it's a cost model we would do the cost model and bring the carrying amount to up to date right so remember when we revalue a figure, we would be comparing, we would be, we would try to bring the assets to the revalued amount, right? So it can be a revaluation gain, it can also be a revaluation loss. It is possible to have a revaluation loss or a revaluation gain. This would this is covered under IEA 16, right? It's not impairment that I'm talking about, it's a revaluation model. When we apply revaluation model, so the asset needs to be revalued, right? So that's done. So the, the, that's the first two steps that we would do. And then the third step is where that we, you, main, you, you would mention if there is no, you know, if it is recognized, depreciation would not be charged and you would be easily, you can um, point out the remainder. Now you would apply uh, the case uh, to this particular scenario, right? So, so you, once you apply, you would clearly point out what needs to be done uh, with respect and how we're gonna treat um, in terms of accounting purposes. Um, this is how we should be treating them, right? The non-current assets, the non-current assets held for sale. This is how we just need to treat them, right? We, we would say we would be, uh, in particular, step two is what most important because, you know, when we treat non-current asset held for sale, on that day, we should be looking, looking out for the fair value cost less disposal, you know, fair value, F, fair value cost less disposal, right? So fair value, fair value cost less disposal, right? So fair value cost less of disposal. That's what we would try to find out here, right? So to start with first, uh, less cost of disposal. So basically um, what I'm trying to explain here, 
you know, we did that. Let's go back to illustration one if we have a if we have a doubt there. So at that date, how I'm gonna when I'm gonna declare it as a non-current as a held for sale, that means I, I should be bring that figure to fair value less cost to sales or cost to disposals. Fair value less cost to disposal. So that means if my previous carrying when I apply the existing standard and on the I bring that value exactly the same date has the date I'm going to classify. If those dates now matches, then I will need to compare the figures. So I would have a carrying amount uh, applied um, using existing standard. And now I have this um, IFRS 5 applications where that I would look for the figure for fair value less cost to dispose it. And if the carrying amount on the balance sheet is higher, then that figure need to be brought down to match the fair value is to dispose. So that would be an impairment loss that need to be considered first. So that impairment loss would be recognized on the day that I'm gonna classify. That's the first step. But the second step is what? On the subsequent measurement, again, I meaning on the reporting date, I should be again carry look for the fair value as cost to disposal uh, figure. And then that need to be compared against the existing carrying amount on that particular day. That means the latest one. And then impairment for the next year or the reporting date impairment would be recognized. But impairment loss would be recognized. So when we so here is where that IEA 36 would come to play. Because you know the M, when we have an impairment, the credit entry is simple. The credit entry is where that the debit entry is simple. Sorry, debit entry we would charge the profit and loss. So how are we gonna how are we gonna credit? Because here we have a group of assets, and you know? we don't have one single asset. If it's one single asset, we would have credited against that asset. But when you have a group of assets, there are specific rules stated um, in the IAS 36, right? So we need to first net them off against goodwill and then proportionately we would net them off on the remaining assets. This is where you would explain IAS 36 rules uh, in your answers. So once it is done, then we would move, you need to move on to discuss the discontinued operations, right? Then there would be a discontinued operation. Discontinued operation is where I would also highlight because what I'm trying to do here, you know, you can see I'm bringing back the like related lecture notes to show you so had you studied or you know whether you first try to understand it and if you have studied then you would know that these questions is doable without any difficulty that's why i just always try to bring the lecture note then you would know where it's coming from right and also it would help you to understand the lecture notes as well so the next part I'm, i have here to discuss the discontinued operations right next one is where the discontinued operations The next one which I need to do is a discontinued operations. When you do the discontinued operations here, right? When you do the discontinued operations here, uh, uh, let me take, let me show you the lecture notes with respect to discontinued operations uh, here, Anna. So let me, uh, so let me get only the big one, little bit one here, right? So here I have the discontinued operations. The briefly, uh, I will uh, discuss that in five. So these are discontinued operations, right? So in order for us to uh, see whether discontinued operations would apply, what is discontinued operations? That means, you know, in our presentation financial statement, and uh, we, if you have three divisions, and if we normally we would put them together and put one sales, the minute we know a business, a division has been closed, or we have a plan to sell that division, then we are expected, according to IFRS 5, to bring that figure separately and then present it under discontinued operations, not together with the other divi other divisions that are going to be continued with us, right? So the division that has been discontinued need to be presented separately, just one single figure is enough. That is what is discontinued operation means. For us uh, to treat a division's figures as a discontinued operations, that these conditions must be satisfied with right? So it has to be a separate major line of business or a geography figure. In this, in our example, six Italian stores going to be a, it satisfies a major geographical area. That's one. And then we also had a single coordinated plan. You know, when you read the question here, so when you read this, when you read this question here, it says there is a single plan. Anna. So let's show you that again. 
So it says what they have. They have a formal plan. See here, uh, the management has committed to a formal plan. They have a single formal plan to sell the assets, the group of assets, right? So it has been stated there. So it's no trouble there. So that condition would be satisfied. So we know the two conditions would satisfy. The first one is the major business geographical area and then the single plan is there. Therefore, it need to be declared as it, it would qualify to be declared as a discounted operations. The, and also you should also point out and these, the, the six stores are component of an entity. What is component of an entity? You should be able to identify its operations, cash flows separately and distinguish easily from the other part of the division. So for the financial reporting purpose. So it is clear. You know, these six stores can be easily can be identified from the other. That's it. Once it is done, you satisfy, you would you can you can discuss how it is being presented, right? So that's what is required in this case. So for if you just look at the solutions, you know, you don't have to, right? I'm um, keep saying that have your own way of presenting. First, as I said to you in the last few videos as well, that always remember. State the principle, right subheading, right here, IFRS 5, non-current asset held for sales, disposal group, subheading, then write this up, say these are the conditions, and then discuss the accounting approach, put subheading clearly, it would definitely score you the marks that you're looking for, chances to score, you know, like 70 plus would be very high, uh, You the chances to, for you to score a good marks would be very high, that if you aim those professional marks, right, so now if you just look at the, let me go through, uh, the first part of this question. So if you just look at the first part of this question here, answers. And uh, so they have first initially, they have discussed, if you just look at them initially up to up to this point, they have discussed the non-current asset held for sale. And also they have discussed the discontinued operations. I don't, I'm not gonna go through read and I would allow you to read. I've explained the questions. I think that is more than enough. Then now let me go into the other part, right? And also, talking about IAS 36. IAS 36 is clearly explained here. You know, when you, for example, uh, you can look at the IAS 36 notes and then compare what was written here as against the IAS 36 notes that you know, right? That you can see in your textbook, right? If you just check these two, then you would see it's, you know, it's just simply reproducing what you or rewriting or just, you know, um, presenting it as a marking scheme. It's not that uh, difficult, right? So, and then another point here, as I pointed out before, when I start the questions, uh, because a closure gonna take place, people gonna lose job, and then therefore redundancy need to be paid, right? So you need to discuss the accounting measure with respect to redundancy. That means if we have a clear formal plan for redundancy, then provision need to be made, right? That's covered under IAS 36. Right, so IAS 37. So additionally, there may need to be provided. That means they need to make, create a provision for additional cost of closure, which is redundancy under the IAS 36. Then the next line would explain the um, how the IA, how the impairment works, right? How the impairment works, and uh, you know what is impairment means. Impairment means you know you may have done this. Impairment means carrying amount versus the recoverable amount, isn't it? That's according to the IAS uh, recoverable amount. This is according to IAS 36, right? Carrying amount, IAS 36, right? That's what impairment means. So a recoverable amount means what? Uh, it is the value in use. It would further, like you can, you can go further on this uh, about what is a recoverable amount. It would be higher of these two, a recoverable amount. It would be uh, the value in use. Right. So it will be fair value, less cost to sales, right? It will be fair value, less cost to sales, right? So it will be fair value, less cost to sales, and then compared against value in use. Value in use. This is what is. Uh, recoverable amount means, right? And higher of this amount will be picked up as a recoverable amount. And then you would compare against the uh, carrying amount. And uh, if there is, if the carrying amount is high, and what we're going to find out uh, would be our impairment loss, assets impairment loss, right? 
Right. So the problem that we have here with respect to these questions, it is not one single asset we have. We have a group of assets. So when you have a group of assets, there are specific rules according to IEAS 36 that the impairment need to be um, set off against the good rule first and then the remainder would be net off against the pro rata basis against the assets, right? Nothing to be worried. This will be covered in detail, right? So yes, we discussed something about IAS 37. We need to discuss the redundancy cost and also we would discuss about the IAS 36 impact. Then we come back to this particular point. Now the second part here, right? This particular line here. Uh, you know, this is all related to the redundancy cost, right? We have this, the la last paragraph is also related to redundancy cost. If I just go back to question paragraph, they said there has been a newspaper article. You know, according to initial paragraph, we thought uh, initial paragraph said only six stores going to be closed, right? So we were considering pro redundancy cost provisions need to be made only for the six uh, staff, you know, done related to the six uh, uh, stores. But then uh, it's, it's further said in the last paragraph, there has been there has been a newspaper article saying that 30 stores may be closed and 500 jobs across the world over the next five years, right, uh, would be uh, uh, lose jobs. So the directors, but what has happened further, they said, but the COBOL directors has denied it. So it is not a formal, it is not agreed, accepted. Uh, it may be a rumor, right? The directors did not accept. So there is no formal plan for them to close 30 stores. They have only planned to close six. So we there is no need for us to provide any provisions for the redundancy cost uh, for the 24 stores because there is no formal provisions. Again, that is related uh, to IAS 37, right? So once we cover, you would find, you know, these are easy six marks that you would be able to score six out of six if you do, if you revise properly, you do all the standards, right? put a lot of efforts onto it from the day one, right? You, you would succeed, right? You would succeed, you know? This is my always I keep aim. If I find the good students, right? I aim them to finish ACCA in nine months. That's that's my target, right? And uh, I have achieved this uh, many times, right? So with 90, some some students, we can go on to 12 months because the tax, some students would like to take a uh, uh, proper six months students tax, right? Uh, so, right, let's do this. So the last paragraph here, we will be discussing about, uh, see here, although there has been a newspaper article that the Cobalt company is to shut 30 stores with a loss of 500 jobs across the world in the next five years, there has been no formal announcement by the Cobalt. And therefore, because there is no formal announcement until there has been a formal plan drawn up, to close additional stores, there had be there should be no provisions made, no provisions should be made for the stores potential uh, potential closure or job losses. It is feasible that the closure of the additional twenty four stores will not take place. There is no constructive obligations unless there is a least there is at least detailed formal plan. So what we are trying to emphasize in the last paragraph, it's about provision. Do we have to uh, set uh, provisions you know if you're going to close the stores we know staff going to lose jobs so there is a requirement from our side from the entity's point of view according to the IAS 37 account provisions need to be made if there is a constructive obligations here there is no formal plan so there is no constructive obligations so the remaining 24 stores we do not have to create any provisions now but those six Italian stores, there is a plan, there is a constructive obligations against those staffs who are going to get redundant. Therefore, we need to create provisions for those six staffs. I think that's what need to be done uh, on, on these questions, right? So I have covered the third questions on IFRS 5, right? Thank you. See you on the next week.